and Apple Notes is still the best second brain. It's gotten some good upgrades recently in the latest iOS and iPadOS updates that have made me double down on using Apple Notes and really not missing any of the features that I left behind with Obsidian. Starting off, collapsible sections, and you can do headers and subheaders, and both of those can collapse now, which makes organizing large notes a lot easier than it was in the past. It's actually made me rethink how I structure notes. And in the past, I might've made more than one note for different things. Let's say I'm taking an online course and there's different modules within the course. I might've chosen to set up a note specifically for each module. And that way, if I'm browsing the folder that has those notes in it, it was a little bit easier to find things. Now with collapsible sections and headers, I can really get away with having one note and it can have you know, as many modules or as many sections as I want inside of it. And that's actually what I've implemented in the latest course that I've taken online. And there are also keyboard shortcuts for these. So Command Shift plus H will give you the header. Command Shift plus J will give you the subheader. And if you screw up and you wanna get back to just the regular body text, that is Command Shift B. And highlighting is finally here in Apple Notes. This makes things a lot easier to summarize. If you're following something like Tiago Forte's progressive summarization, where you start with an executive summary, then you have some quick you know, overview of what the note is about, then you have your highlighted sections before you get into the deep contents of the note. Doing that is now significantly easier in Apple Notes. Previously, you would have had to go in and change the color of the text manually. And uh, I actually don't know if you could have done that on iPhone or iPad, but it was easiest to do on the Mac. And it was still a right click into the font menu, into the color wheel to pick a different color for the text. So uh, very cumbersome. Now it's just a couple of clicks. The highlight button sits at the top of Apple Notes and you can pick a few different built-in colors. Um, and it makes things a lot easier to stand out within the note. Personally, I don't do progressive summarization, but I have gotten a little bit better about going back into notes and maybe organizing them a little bit better, especially with the section headers, moving things around, getting a few key items to the top of the note um, has been important. And I do wanna get better at progressive summarization in the future. It's December, 2024, and the app of the month is Apple Notes. If you're new here, I'm Bill, welcome, I'm happy to have you. I make videos about tech, productivity, gear, and more, so if that sounds good to you, get subscribed, leave a like button if this video was helpful. Okay, Forever Notes is a new framework that we have to talk about when we're talking about Apple Notes. And with the insertion of note linking within Apple Notes, this Forever Notes system has come along and created these different hubs, we'll call them, uh, like a home note and uh, a health note and a finance note. And all of these things are linked together. There's actually um, a lot of great shortcuts on the website that can help you get started with the Forever Notes framework, build some of this out for you. And actually the journal feature might be the most important here for me. That aside, let's talk about the home note because that's the one piece I have implemented from Forever Notes and have been using it. Now, this is a little bit of a departure from a folder-based structure and in, the for and in the Forever Notes framework, it is suggested that you use the main notes folder and create a tagging system in order to help you easily uh, resurface notes and find things within your Apple Notes. Now, I've been using the para method projects, area, resources, and archives for the better part of a year, maybe a year and a half now. It would be a little cumbersome for me to switch. And like I said, I do like having folders for specific tasks, like courses or other things that are going on in my life. So I haven't fully implemented the tagging system. I have started um, kind of adding some tasks to notes here and there as I um, mainly finish things off for the YouTube channel. I'll tag it as, you know, posted and I'll tag it as YouTube. And then I throw it into my archive folder. I did find it's a little bit cumbersome to find things in my archive folder, especially if I don't quite remember what a uh, video was about or if I, you know, whatever. It's easier to find if I can just pull up everything that I've posted to YouTube. 
uh, in a search or in a smart folder. So for me, it was easier to keep a system that works, you know, don't stray too far away, but, you know, bring in some of these new ideas and um, new ways to do things to help me be more efficient and more productive. So the home note is the way that I chose to do that. And mine has, you know, a couple different areas as they would be called and a couple different projects. And I have links to each one of these things. So I look at my YouTube note, I have my idea hub where I keep all of my uh, YouTube ideas, videos, and I have a link to that and I click the idea hub, brings me there. And then at the top of the idea hub, I put a link to go back to the home note. So that is the one big downside with Apple Notes is that backlinks are not yet built in. And so you do have to manually add those, but it's easy enough to um, then click around and navigate between, you know, idea hub back to home. I have a dashboard for this app of the month type video. So same thing, I click the app of the month dashboard, got a list of all the things that I want to get through for the next year, year and a half basically. And then I have another link back to the home note. This system deserves its own video. I might do that in the future. The creator of the Forever Notes system has a ton of resources on his website, does have a very thorough YouTube channel going through some of the setup and the different sections. So I highly recommend you check that out. I'll leave the link down in the description. And Readwise Import is next. So this was something that was definitely missing from Apple Notes and it still is a little bit cumbersome to get these things in there, but I um, saw a post from Harvey Stagner on Threads who came up with a shortcut that you can paste your Readwise API into and then go um, select the date that you last imported into Apple Notes. And you run this shortcut. It, it did pull all of my Readwise highlights into Apple Notes. Didn't take that long. There are a couple you know, weird things, some duplicate notes. I'm not wild about how it formats the notes compared to Obsidian or how you see it in like a Readwise daily summary, but it works and it gets all the information in there, which is really all I care about because I wanna be able to search things, I wanna reference quotes, and I often use those in my writing or in my videos to add to the points that I'm making. And then the final thing that I found out about, I don't know how long this has been around, but Obsidian has an Apple Notes importer. Okay, Bill, why are you talking about Obsidian? This is an Apple Notes video. Yeah, the main problem that I've had and still have with Apple Notes is that you don't control the notes. Now, somebody on thread said, yeah, well, you can save to your local desktop, then iCloud. Yeah, great. Well. For me, I want to be able to use the Apple Notes on my Mac, on my iPhone, on my iPad, wherever I am, I want to be able to access my Apple Notes. I don't really care about saving it on my desktop. But I do want to be able to back up the files and control them myself because there were some reports recently during an iCloud outage that some Apple Notes users did lose data. I'll have to follow back up on that. I don't know if they lost it permanently or if when uh, iCloud service was restored, they were able to go to one of the iCloud backups and restore their information. But that kind of got me thinking, you know, well, shoot, I have over 700 notes in Apple Notes now. Um, I'd be pretty screwed if I lost all of that data. So the Obsidian importer takes all of your Apple Notes and imports them to Obsidian. And the benefit of Obsidian is it creates markdown text files that work on any computer and you can store them wherever you want. So the downside here is, you know, my uh, second brain in Obsidian is in fact stored in iCloud, but uh, I can also then take those markdown files and back them up to my own personal server, an extra couple hard drives. My computer is backed up to a service called Backblaze. So it, it enables some redundancy for me uh, for my Apple Notes where I'm not just relying on iCloud and iCloud performance to you know stay active all the time to make sure I have access to my notes. And if you spend a year or two building an Apple Notes you know kind of database and all of your different thoughts and um, projects and resources are in there, you do want to be able to back them up. So that's great. And then all of the things that I love about Apple Notes are still true. It's easy to use. The rich text formatting, 
is great. You can paste in pictures. You can write with the Apple Pencil. You know, it gives you rich web links if you're pasting web pages. Uh, you have QuickNote everywhere, and QuickNote is context aware. So if you're in Safari and you pull up a QuickNote, it'll say, hey, do you want to add this web page in there? You know, what's your note about? That sort of thing is great. Uh, I use Siri via CarPlay very often uh, to trigger Apple Notes. And as I'm listening to podcasts or um, audiobooks on the way to the on the way to work, I will use that to input data to Apple Notes that I want to remember for the future. Audio transcription is now built directly in. That was a great feature that was added. So you can now record audio to Apple Notes directly and it will be automatically transcribed. You can drop an audio file into Apple Notes and it will be automatically transcribed. You can use the voice notes feature on the iPhone and that will be automatically transcribed and you can paste it into Apple Notes and that transcription goes with it. So that was a feature that was missing, in my opinion, in Apple Notes, you know, for students and other people, if you're listening to lectures and you want to record and you want to have a transcript. I know there were a few classes in college that I would have found that invaluable to have. We talked about note linking and the minor issues with backlinking being manual so far. Uh, but the fact that it has linking and, and that's here is great and it works well. And of course, shortcut support. I'm a big supporter of shortcuts for Apple Notes. I have a few that I use myself for the journal and a few other things that automatically add in things like the date, the time, the weather, my location, if I find that information to be useful for the note that I'm taking. I've got uh, shortcuts for different projects and other things like that as well. And then I've recently warmed up to tags and smart folders. Now these have been there for a while, um, but I've started using them a little bit more, like I said, for things like YouTube and writing and um, to understand what I've posted versus what I have not. And I think that about wraps it up. I really enjoy using Apple Notes. It's definitely my favorite productivity, you know, note taking system that I've used out of um, it and Obsidian and OneNote. And I continue to make it my hub for all things in my life, projects, resources, areas and archives. And it's been immensely helpful over the last year and a half. Let me know down in the comments below what you're using for your personal knowledge management system. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Later. <laughs>